I'm gonna walk you through step by step of how you can network your PTZ cameras. We're actually gonna network these cameras along with an IP based controller so everything is on our network, thus relieving us from having to physically connect through daisy chain cables and just having a complete mess. So if you're ready for a simple solution, make sure you hit the like button for this video and hit the subscribe button if you're new and let's start getting everything connected to the network. Now, before we actually start networking all of our equipment, you actually need to know what equipment that I'm using for this setup, because that is gonna be important. You wanna make sure that you're using equipment that allows you to actually connect to a network. So using an IP-based controller and using what we're gonna first start off with, a PoE switch. Now, you don't need a PoE switch, which means power over ethernet, but it does make life a little bit easier and helps you eliminate the cables. By using a PoE switch, you can actually power on your controller and your cameras through the ethernet cable. So you don't actually have to use that big brick and try to find another power outlet for these devices. So I'm actually using a four port PoE switch and the fifth port on the switch is actually connected to my internet source. So once we connect internet using one of our ethernet cables, then this allows us to connect four of our devices to it directly to be on the same network and to get power as well. Now, if you are using a PoE switch, you do wanna make sure that your device is capable of being PoE powered. Not all cameras are powered the same way. So definitely check that in your user manual. But we're actually gonna connect two cameras our controller, and we're also gonna make sure that our laptop is on the same network as well. Now, in some cases, you may need a larger switch, and I'll link to a switch that I'm actually getting ready to receive in the description section of this video, along with the other equipment that I'm using. A larger switch in general will allow you to include all the devices that you may have. So you may have more than four devices because other devices such as your 810 mini video switcher can also be added to your network. And by having everything on the same switch, it's just gonna make your overall networking life that much easier. So we're gonna first start off by plugging a network cable in each of these devices. Controller, BZB gear, PTZ optics camera. And as I'm plugging in, our network cables, all of our devices are actually turning on. So you can see that using less cables to do the same amount of work is essential to this process just to streamline everything. One cable powers on our equipment and it's gonna allow us to talk to each other across the network. Now I did mention we were using a four port switch and to make things just a little bit easier, I'm actually going to network up my laptop as well because if everything is on the same switch, it's just gonna make things easier in the end. Now I could just use the Wi-Fi and connect my laptop that way as I typically do any other time that I'm working, but I wanna make sure that you guys are able to go through all of the networking steps properly in case you do need to wire up your computers. Now that we have all of our equipment powered on over our ethernet cable and our PoE switch. One thing to keep in mind when you're gonna configure everything on your network is that you have an IP address. And that IP address is unique to each individual device. By default, out of the box, each of these devices will have an IP address assigned to it, either a static IP address or a dynamic IP address. Now here's the difference. A static IP address is permanently placed on that device. It can be change, but it just makes it so that you don't have an IP address that continues to switch between different devices as they get restarted, turned on and off. If you want the same IP address for the same piece of equipment all the time, then you would program a static IP. Now, however, there may be environments where you don't necessarily need a static IP address. For example, when I take my PTZ optics cameras out on the road and we live stream an event, I don't necessarily want a static address. I want a dynamic address because the network scheme is different and I want to make sure that I'm at least on the scheme and so which either way you go is fine but in some cases you may prefer either a static IP address because nothing is ever going to change in your environment or a dynamic because you're constantly going to be changing back and forth between different settings so if you have questions on it just let me know but I definitely want to make sure that you do know the difference because all of these devices already have an IP address and 
we will need to be changing them. The first device that we're gonna check our networking settings will be on our laptop. In the search menu, we're gonna type in network, view network connections, and we're gonna look for our active connection. We're gonna right click on that and go into properties, and then we're gonna look for internet protocol version six and select properties again and by default we have to obtain an ip address automatically so in order to see the actual ip address that's not showing here we're going to go back into our magnifying glass icon type in the cmd command and then type in ip config forward slash all we're going to scroll up and find our ip address which is 192.168.1.157. Now, this is the IP address of our laptop. And one thing to note is that there's four numbers in this IP address. The first three are the ones that we're really gonna be paying attention to. And the fourth number is gonna be unique for each device. So if, for example, because our laptop is 192.168.1.157, 157, 157 is unique to our laptop. That means the other devices could have numbers such as 158, 159, 200, anything all the way up to essentially 254. So making sure that the first three numbers in the IP address of each of your devices is crucial to this setup. So let's get started checking out the IP address of our controller because that's gonna be the next piece of gear that we're gonna be using. Now, because we plugged in the network cable to each of our devices when we powered them up, each device has a IP address. On the controller, our IP address shows as 192.168.1.219. Now, this is good because the first three numbers in the IP address match the first three numbers in the laptop. This means that the laptop can actually talk to the controller and these two are going to be able to work without a problem. Now, we need to continue on and check our two cameras cameras to see what their IP addresses are. Out of the box, your PTZ camera should have come with the user manual. Now, if you've bought your camera used and you don't have a manual, the next step would be to look at Google to find out what the default IP address is for your cameras. Now, if you don't know what the IP address is for your cameras, or maybe it was changed by the previous owner, we can also check by using a HDMI cable and connecting it to a monitor to pull up the IP address, which is what we're actually gonna do here. But instead of going directly into to a computer monitor, I'm actually gonna go into my A10 mini switcher and pull up the IP address that way. So we're gonna connect our HDMI cable and we'll start with our PTZ optics camera and plug the other end into our A10 mini. After connecting your camera to your video source, the easiest way to actually identify your IP address is to restart your camera. So we're gonna just turn it off and then turn it back on. And then during the reset process, and within the first couple seconds on your screen, you'll have to take note of that IP address. This is the fastest and quickest way to identify it. So we see on the screen, our IP address is 192.168.1.212. So now we are three for three. We have three devices all on the same subnet. So just like we did with the PTZ optics camera, we're gonna do the exact same thing with our BZB gear camera. We're gonna plug in the HDMI into our monitor, hit the reset button and wait for the IP address to populate on screen. Awesome, it looks like we are four for four. The IP address for the BZB gear camera is 192.168.1.226. So having the first three numbers in our IP address all matching is what we're looking for. And now we don't have to worry about making any configuration changes to any of the devices. Now the reason that we were able to get all of our devices on the same IP subnet is because they're all connected to the same switch. And that is why it's so important to try to connect all your devices to one singular switch. Otherwise, you will have to go into devices and then manually change the IP address. Now, I wanna show you something really cool that you can do with your controller to talk to all of your devices. And that's by going into your software for your controller. Because, let me just show you. Now from our computer, we're gonna jump into a web console for our controller and we're gonna to connect to it using the IP address of the controller. And we're gonna log into it by the default credentials. 
And then from here, we can actually see the IP addresses connected through the different channels. And these channels are actually cam one through cam six on the controller. Now, what we need to do is change the settings for the different cameras that we're gonna be using because we've already identified their IP addresses. So inside of our first channel, we're gonna change our first camera to .212, which is our PTZ Optics camera. And we're gonna hit save. And then for our, our second camera, we're gonna select modify channel two. And our second camera is 192.168.1.226, which is already here because I actually have used this camera in the past and the IP address happened not to change. So both of our cameras are now connected to our SuperJoy controller. So we are having everything controlled over our network. That is the setup, we are done. So now let's just make sure that everything works. So we're gonna select camera one on our SuperJoy controller, which should control our PTZ camera. And there we go, there we have it. Now if I select camera two, this should control our BZB gear camera, which it does. So just like that, very simply, not a whole bunch of extra cables, we're able to control all of our devices over our network. Having a PoE switch makes this a lot more helpful because you don't have to deal with extra power cables running around, but making sure that you do have enough ports on your PoE switch is going to be important. A link to everything that I'm using will be in the video description of this video. Now make sure you check out the other video if you want to learn how to daisy chain your cameras together, or you're just looking to see why you should probably look into PTZ cameras if you haven't had one already. Look forward to seeing you in the next video.